welcome to uh, Select Series. In uh, this segment, uh, uh, we are going to discuss the power and phenotype Angus bulls within our lineup. Uh, with me today, I have uh, uh, Brian House, um, uh, Vice President of Beef Programs, to discuss them, and uh, one of our leads on Angus sire acquisitions and our Angus cow family specialist, uh, Joe Meyer, here to, to discuss the, our power and phenotype bulls. And we're pretty excited about this section and the bulls that we brought in. And to lead off, uh, uh, this group of bulls is a pair of brothers in uh, Growth Fund and Wall Street, Joe. Yeah, I kind of got the easy job on this one talking about two full brothers that we have in our lineup. And they're just easy bulls to talk about. Um, starting with Growth Fund, uh, what I like to kind of categorize him is he's just, he's probably the most popular Angus bull in America right now. And he's a bull that if you just use him across the board, you're going to get some improvement on cattle and many times you get just tremendous improvement. Um, most people that have used that bull are very, very happy with the, the quality of cattle. They're happy with the performance on them. Uh, and they're very happy with what they bring at sales. They've been some of the top sellers around the country um, this fall and early winter. But he does an excellent job of, of siring growth, uh, putting together a very good structured phenotypical package, cattle that are very useful in many applications and in all regions of the country. Um, he keeps things together in terms of an EPD profile that's high growth. He's pushing up. Uh, close to the $300 C mark, still has very good data uh, all across the board and just really makes nice usable cattle. I like to tell folks that if you haven't used him, you need to sample him, but I would like to encourage everyone to put a couple canes of semen in your tank and if you have a repeat cow, this is a bull you can just go to and you know you're gonna get, you're gonna get quality. We're also very fortunate to have his brother, and that's unusual for a bull stud to market two full brothers. But uh, they came to us at different time frames, but these bulls do kind of breed two different ways. Uh, growth Fund gives you, like I said, that, that extra punch and that power and really, really good structure and phenotype. Uh, but Wall Street adds some things that Growth Fund doesn't have. Wall Street adds uh, marbling. He's a higher marbling bull. He boosts you a little higher on dollar C. Uh, he's a bull that adds tremendous depth of body. The females are really soft middled, deep broody cows and the bulls still perform really, really well. Uh, genetically, they're not that far off, but when you see the cattle, um, there are some differences and some prefer uh, one bull over the other. I think uh, Wall Street is the one that if you like those deep rib, soft made uh, kind of cattle that, uh, that you're going to love the phenotype and love the function of them, he's the one that hits there. So these two brothers are very easy to use. They do a great job and I, I feel like you can go either way depending on your choice of the kind of cattle you want to make. Thanks, Joe, and, and being at the bull stud a week ago and, and having people there to look at the bulls, both those bulls from a phenotype standpoint are, are easy to pick out and crowd favorites as we go through the bulls. With that, moving on to a uh, standby bull in our lineup, uh, turn over here to Brian. Um, if you can discuss Niagara. Easy to do, John. Uh, Niagara would be a favorite of, my, of not only myself, but I guess we'll call him a customer favorite. We're talking about favorites now, Joe, and... This is, this is a bull that falls in line. Um, I, could, I could go on a long time talking about what this bull has done for us as well as our customers, but he, he has settled into a place, well, I can call him a global bull. I mean, he is, he is known worldwide for the things he does. Uh, he's been with us a long time, came from a great program in Indiana, the Stewart Select program. Uh, adds muscle, adds pounds. He consistently does that. Uh, one of the things that I think is really neat in this bull's regard we were talking about this bull as a foot improver before foot improvement became an EPD. And so we were already helping customers make some improvements that way. And then when the EPDs came out, we realized that he's right there amongst the leaders. Um, I think in terms of carcass improvement, we really never counted on Niagara to be a big carcass improving bull. Guess what? He's right there. 
I mean, there's carcass weight. There's pretty pretty good marbling, and he's always been a bull that uh, that does the muscle thing pretty well. So in terms of of what this bull fits in the in the Angus breed and in the commercial cow herds we work with, powerful cows, not too tall, lots of pounds, lots of extra pounds, I guess, in terms of uh, in terms of weight, uh, good uttered females, and lots of performance. So he's proven. We know what he does, and our customers count on him. Yeah, Brian, and he's a bull that we continue to have sex semen available yes. on. Yes, um, we do. Within our lineup. Uh, moving on to the next bull in this segment would be, uh, uh, as we talk about pounds and power, would be a bull out of the mock program in South Dakota in, in Tice. Uh, when we uh, set out to bring this bull in, we were looking for uh, an enhanced sun that offered carcass merit, but yet um, had added phenotype in terms of, of muscle mass. Um, this bull, if you study him, he's about a six and a half frame, a little larger frame bull, but is just full of added pounds and performance, super long, deep bodied, yet he's going to do it in a little bit bigger frame package. He's going to be one of our better bulls for dollar C as you start to uh, combine those performance traits. But what, you, what is also unique about him is in addition to the power of growth that he offers, he's very good for docility, probably one of our best docility bulls. Uh, in the lineup and so I think when you combine some of the traits that he does for for performance pounds you can do that without giving up a ton of carcass and you can do it in that bigger frame package. Any comments there Joe? Oh I, I just think Entice is a bull that's got got a little got more future in him. These cattle are just really really good. Uh, it appears to me I mean they've just got more timber and bone under them and you get the growth and those cattle perform really well uh, the feedback we get, people really, really like them. The other thing I would mention, phenotypically, uh, he puts that long square hip in him. He adds more depth of body than you might expect out of uh, that line of pedigree. And I, I think we're going to start seeing more and more of these cattle uh, show up. Uh, I haven't found anyone yet that doesn't like them. And, and uh, you'll see these cattle top in sales. So there, he is a true performance sire, but makes them good looking too. Thanks, Joe. Uh, moving on to our next bull in this section is, is one of the bulls that I'm probably the most excited about and feel it is one of the up and comers uh, within our Angus lineup, and that is Ferguson Trailblazer. Um, as you start to study this bull, very balanced from a uh, EPD performance standpoint. He offers double digit calving ease, combines it with breed leading growth. You start to tie the maternal side of heifer pregnancy, also does it without sacrificing being over one for marbling and up there for ribeye. So I think we get those questions of people that are wanting double digit calving ease and a larger frame bull. Um, that can maintain that performance. I think Trailblazer is an excellent uh, 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 bull that can come in and do that. I think he's just starting to find his way uh, onto the scene and, and he continues to fit uh, uh, that demand. I think he could be used in commercial heifer projects where that, that again, that larger framed, more extended type of bull um, is warranted. And, and we think about his double digit calving ease, but he also excels for heifer pregnancy and, uh, and marbling, so you can kind of do a balanced tape, trait profile uh, when using him on heifers uh, with Trailblazer. Have anything to add to him, Brian? Not a, not a lot, John, but I'm, gl I'm glad you talk about that bull the way you do. And I, this, is, this is one that uh, I told Lauren early on, this is the kind of bull that Select Sires built their program around. It's this, there's lots of data here. There's a cow family, there's a good breeder, but as we sample bulls like that and find out just how good they are, they kind of open the gates to a whole, a whole set of customers we may not have had before. And this is a bull that I think we can do that with. Uh, this group of bulls, a lot of fun to talk about because we know that people like to look at their cattle. And this, these bulls, along with several others, are bulls that do a pretty doggone good job of helping people appreciate the way their cattle look, yet the cattle still have the performance they demand. So it's just a fun group. And in closing out this section of our Angus bulls, we'll uh, turn to Joe to discuss the brigade bull. Yeah, brigade, uh, uh, talk about the bulls that have power and performance. I mean, brigade's one of those bulls, and if anyone ever has the opportunity, if you've seen him, he, he leaves an impression on you. That bull is very, very good in terms of phenotype and structure. He's really wide top. He's really open rib. Uh, you get behind him, there's, there's width in that quarter and that stifle area. Tracks really wide and really deep. This bull's built from very proven genetics, top and bottom. Um, he's a colonel son, 
And at this point in time, there's not a tremendous amount of Colonel Sons offered in the AI industry. Um, and he's our only Colonel Son. But we have really big hopes for him because I, I think you're going to have high performance cattle in a very eye pleasing package. I think he's going to add muscle, um, visual muscle and, and increase foot quality. I'm not worried about the maternal side either. He's out of a tremendous cow. And uh, of course, on the bottom side, and then Y69 shows up on the top side. So I think a royally bred pedigree, really one of those bulls that if you see him, just kind of makes you just stop and stare because he's so uh, good phenotypically. But I think um, what, his, what he offers genetically in terms of just performance and power, I think he's one of our top ones and one of the up and coming ones we need to talk about. Thanks, Joe and uh, Brian. This section is very exciting when it's, you know, when you talk about uh, uh, power and phenotype, we all know that pounds pay in the beef business. And I think uh, when you go look at these bulls, not only from a phenotype standpoint, but from a performance standpoint, I think they stamp pretty well there. <laughs>